Hello grade 6 This chapter is about a concept called forces and the effect of forces on different objects Now what is force? Well, you cannot see force directly but you can see its effect on objects Now, when a force affects an object we say that a force acts on it now when a force acts on an object you can see two things one a change of position it means it moves from point a to point b or for example it would be moving then it stops and we can see also a change of shape like when you mold a play-doh now the acts of force on an object can be divided into a push pull, stretch, and turn, but mainly, mainly these categories are uh, basically limited into push and pull, stretch and turn being a combination of one of each of these type of forces acting on an object. Now, I would like you to refer to this YouTube link and watch the video about forces. It's very informative and really helps you along. Now, the scientist who helped a lot in describing forces and motion is Sir Isaac Newton. He wrote his book about uh, forces, a big book, by the way, when he was 25. And the story goes that an apple fell and he wondered why it fell downwards and not upwards, and he started the study of forces from that point. Now, if you are going to study a force, first you define it, which is it's a push or a pull or a turn or a stretch on an object. The second thing you need to know is how would you draw a force or show it in a diagram? Well, you show force by an arrow. This is a diagram, di diagram of an arrow, but if you draw an arrow, that will be enough for a diagram. Now, the arrow has two functions. First, it shows you the direction, left, right, up or down, or whatever, or whatever direction the force is, and also shows you the size. The size is shown by the length of an arrow. If the arrow is longer, that indicates that the force is bigger. If the arrow is shorter, that means that force is less or smaller at that point. So if you have a big force, it would look like this. If you have a small force, it would look like this. And the length decides the, 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 the amount of the force, not the size of the arrow. So when you draw an arrow, you don't want to have you don't want to worry about the size of the arrow, you just have to worry about the length. Longer means bigger force, shorter means less force. And the direction, left, right, up, or down. So if you look at this diagram, you can see many forces drawn. Now this would be a arrow that would you, you would draw on your diagram saying that this force works downward, this force works upwards, and for example, this force works pushing the object to the right side. Yeah, right side. Anyways. Now, you can see these arrows are not into much difference, but this arrow looks taller. So this arrow would be the bigger force, while these arrows would have the less force. For example here, lift is a natural force, thrust is a force, or pull, push. Gravity is a very famous force that we're going to talk about. Now, if you are going to show force in numbers, a, what's the unit of the force? B, what objects would you use to measure force? Now, we have different sensors to measure force. However, in a lab, if you're going to measure a force, you're going to use an instrument called a force meter or a Newton meter. It's basically a spring, and this spring is attached to a hook, and uh, the, you have a marker next to the spring that shows how, okay, that shows a number. Now, when the spring is stretched, stretched down to a, to, a, to a certain value, 
That value represents the force acting on an object now. This, if we were at school, we would go to the lab and show you the force meter anyways. This is how it looks like. It's like a hanger with numbers. So if you hang an object here, the numbers would show you the force which the object is was acting on the object. Now, as you can see, there's a limit to the force that the force is represented by the number line. However, if you want to measure force accurately, we have special devices like electronic devices that actually measure forces up to tons if you want to. Comes handy if you want to make an object that flies in space. You need to know the force of that object. Now, uh, the force by we or the unit by we which by we by we by which we measure force is after the scientist who discovered it, which is Newton. So you say 10 Newtons, 7 Newtons, and you, uh, you abbreviate it by the letter N. For example, you push a table with 20 Newtons. And you can use a scale, but as you, as you saw, the scale is, doesn't have a big range. So you can also use a, use a monitor or a device that actually measures force in unlimited numbers, actually, or it depends on the, on the on the purpose of your, uh, for example, the purpose why you want, want to measure force. For example, if you want to measure the force of a car, that's a different case than if you want to measure the force by which an earthquake can work on a certain area. Hmm. Gravity. Now, gravity is one of the most famous forces that acts on objects on planet Earth, and we're going to talk about it in more details in the next video. For now, please concentrate on the main ideas, which is force, it's a push, pull, stretch, or turn, acting on an object. It is measured by a unit called Newtons. Uh, it's represented by arrows, showing the length of the arrow shows the, the amount of the voice, and the direction of the arrow shows the direction act of a force acting on an object. For now, we're done. And the next video, we're going to explain gravity as a force.